I told you guys I got the PTO option on this truck, right? Well, we are off to get ourselves a new hay baler today. Uh, for, I said last year if we could replace one big piece of equipment that our round baler was really the, the most in need of being replaced because while the one we have does work, it's older and it's got a few issues, it's got some wear, and it's just cost prohibitive to start rebuilding. So for the last little while, we have been looking around, looking for a good used, but nicer used baler than what we have. This is just how it goes when you're a you know, first generation rancher, first generation farmer. Most of us start with used equipment, older equipment that may not be in the best shape and may need a little repair. And we just upgrade over time as we have the opportunity. Well, we have been looking for a replacement round baler for a few months now. And earlier this week, my friend actually located one, went over to inspect it, and purchased it. It is a John Deere 567 round baler, and I've never seen it. <laughs> does have lights on it at the back and it does have a seven pin light plug right there but the problem is that plug is a round uh, round post and mine is a flat post so we're not gonna mess with that plan is to use my light bar but I didn't bring a small strap to attach it with so I got to get a strap for that I got to uh, I got to grab a seven pin adapter because this truck doesn't have a four pin plug on it apparently. Highway 14 and Highway 71 out here in kind of northeastern-ish Colorado. And we have been towing this baler for approximately, I don't know, a little while since we left Sterling. And you can see our lights are still good, but I just want to get out and check our, check our tires, check our hubs. I'm expecting to feel a little heat, but nothing insane. I can live with that. The, uh, the hubs are not warm at all. The tires have a little heat to them, but nothing outrageous. Not really worse than the tires on the pickup. Now, you may be wondering why I am flat towing this baler instead of having it up on the gooseneck trailer. The reason for that is, one, this baler is a little bit wider than the trailer is. Not by much, but just enough to be kind of a pain in the tail. And two, we do not have a good way to unload this thing once we get it home. We could use a tractor and a loader or a bobcat or something like that to load this thing at the implement dealer where I just picked it up. But once I get it home, the only thing we have to unload this with is our John Deere Model 6410 that does not have a loader on it. So in order to hook to this thing and pull it off of a trailer, we would actually have to back the 6410 up onto the trailer and try to hitch it up. And I just didn't really, uh, didn't really want to do that. Seems like a lot of opportunity for something to go wrong. So I figured I would just flat tow this thing back, which is fine. It's common practice. People do it all the time. The tires are in good shape. The wheel bearings are in good shape. And we're not getting in a big hurry. I'm keeping it 
keeping it right around 50 miles an hour, sticking to the state highway, staying off the interstate, and just taking our time, enjoying, uh, you know, enjoying the trip. new used John Deere 567 round baler and the baler may be ready to go but this box here that I'm holding still needs to be dealt with because in this box is the rest of this baler system because right here is our bale monitor and right here is a baler moisture tester these items need to be hooked up in our John Deere 6410 tractor that is going to be powering this. This is the bale monitor for our older Heston 560 round baler. This is going to be coming out. And this is our old moisture tester. Instead of having a, a nice one that was kind of built into the baler, we had a standalone unit that we would have to get out and physically stab the bales with to check them and see. We're gonna flash back here for a second so I can talk to you. The bale monitor there is the controller for that baler. It's what tells it when to wrap, when to open, and it shows the operator how that bale is building. Because on a round baler like this, you have to apply a little technique and feed that bale, the grass in there properly, or else you're gonna end up with a lopsided bale. So that's why the monitor is important and the moisture tester is critical as well because you need your hay to be dry. Now fortunately, I guess it's one good part about us living in such a dry area is our hay dries down extremely quickly and it's pretty common practice for us to be able to cut hay one morning and bale it the following morning. Uh, worst case scenario, we might have to rake it the following morning and bale it that afternoon, but we really really don't have a lot of moisture issues here because we really don't have any water here. This is all dry land farming in an area that receives very little rainfall. Irrigation is not an option for us because not only are our hay fields a number of smaller properties spread around the area, uh, any aquifer sourced irrigation in the state of Wyoming and several other western states is controlled by the government and they are not going to allow us to take millions upon millions of gallons of water out of that aquifer to to grow hay with. So we get what we get and like I said last year we averaged 450 pounds per acre which is not not sustainable. We make a commitment to our landowners we will cut their property we have to cut their property. Most of the time it works out okay some years uh, some years not so much but that's farming. Our setup is changing a little bit. We're making some upgrades. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. For now, I got to get to work. So I'm just going to say thanks for watching and more later.